When it comes to light in our tanks, it's pretty easy to see whether or not there's light in certain areas. We can tell that closer towards the surface, it's a lot brighter, and as you get further down in the tank, it gets a little bit darker. But when it comes to the corals that we're keeping, it's not enough to just know that there's different levels of light in our tanks. It's actually pretty important for the growth and the health of the coral to know exactly how much light they're getting. Now, to do that, to measure the light, we would use a device called a PAR meter. And that is what this video is gonna be about today. I'm gonna to walk you through what it's like to rent a PAR meter from saltwateraquarium.com, and we're gonna go through and test the PAR on my tank. So stick around. <laughs> for Waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Like I mentioned, it is nearly impossible to tell the amount of light that your tank is getting without actually measuring it. Sure, you can look and see that certain areas are a little bit more shaded than others, but you don't have any actual data, just observations. In order to get some data, you need something that's called a PAR meter. PAR stands for photosynthetically active radiation, and you are going to use a tool called a PAR meter to measure the amount of light that different areas in your tank are receiving. Now, PAR meters are not necessarily a tool that every aquarist has in their toolkit. And the reason for that is because PAR meters can be fairly expensive, which is why a lot of times when it comes to using PAR meters, people tend to rent them. Now, typically you could rent them from your local fish store, but I've got a totally different option for you. You can actually rent one from saltwateraquarium.com and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So when you go to the saltwateraquarium.com website, you're gonna click on the tab that says what's new. If you go all the way over to the right of that, you are going to see where it says rentals. Now, PAR meters aren't the only thing that Saltwater Aquarium will rent to you, but that's what we're gonna be looking at today. So go ahead and click PAR meter, and when you're here, you can go ahead and add it to your cart. Now, you wanna make sure that you read the fine print because it gives you a whole description on the process of how you get your money back once you rent it and how to return it and all of the shipping information that you need. Now, if for some reason you go to the website and it says that it's out of stock, go ahead and put your email in so that you can be notified when it's back in stock that you could go ahead and rent it. Now, I've gone ahead and placed an order to rent the PAR meter from saltwateraquarium.com and I thought I would walk you through step by step on what it looks like to use one. They're actually very simple tools, but I thought I would show you and demo my tank. Now, before I got the PAR meter, one thing that I went ahead and did was I took a picture of my tank and printed it out. I actually printed out a couple of different copies. Now, the reason for this is because as I'm going through my tank, I'm going to be measuring the amount of light in different areas of my tank. I wanna have something that I can write that down on. And so while my tank has a set lighting schedule right now, it's what's not to say that I won't need to change that a little bit down the road. So I've made a couple different sheets and I'm gonna mark them at the top as to what percentage the blues and whites and all of the other channels are on. Now I've got the red sea lights, but yours might vary a little bit depending on the lights that you have. But typically if your lights can be run through an app, you probably have the option of raising and lowering those lighting percentages. So as you can see, I've got a bunch of different areas on here highlighted that I know I want to measure. So once I get that PAR meter, we can go ahead and get started. Okay, the PAR meter has arrived. I've gone ahead and taken it out of the box and this is what it looks like. So it's got almost everything that you need in here to do the measurements. Here is everything that comes in the box. One, you are going to get a little battery you are going to get the handheld device. So this is where your reading is gonna be on. And then you are going to get the little light meter. Now the light meter should have a little cap that just sits on top, easy as that. Now, when it comes to using the PAR meter when you get it, so you can see back here, there's a little space. You're gonna to have to put the battery in. So you will need a Phillips head screwdriver to get the battery in. 
Okay, I've got the battery in and it is ready to go. Now, something that does not come with this that I have added to it, just to make things a little bit easier when it comes to moving the light sensor around to get the measurements, is this long stick. It was part of a cleaning tool that I had, but if you have something like a piece of rigid acrylic or even a piece of PVC lying around, you could also use that. Um, I just have a rubber band that is attaching the two together and hopefully we'll make Make it easy for me to go ahead and do the readings. So let's go ahead and get started taking some readings and see where the tank is at. Something to keep in mind when you're taking these measurements is making sure that there's nothing obstructing the light as it hits the meter. So this could be things like ripples in the water. It could be um, like the, the line or this rigid pipe that I have it attached to. We don't want those, so try and keep it at an angle. are looking at the light in your tank you would think directly underneath the individual lights is probably going to be higher but if you take a look at where the light from both of these light structures intersect in the center it's probably going to be higher levels of light than you would see on the outside so this is almost the exact center of my tank i'm going to move this further out towards the edge See how those PAR readings go down the further to the outside of the tank that I get? That's just something to keep in mind when you are placing your corals. That's a pretty big difference. So I got finished going through the tank and writing down all of the readings for PAR in each of the different places that I had set out. And I went back through, I turned up the lights a little bit in their intensity and went and did the same thing and wrote down all of those values. Now, what I learned from this is that I'm not keeping my lights as strong as they need to be. I wasn't expecting that, I thought they were doing good, but turns out I need to crank up the intensity on the lights just a little bit. Now, something else that I learned while I was doing this is that if I want to start keeping SPS or increase and get more SPS in my tank, I really do need to think about increasing the intensity of the light, that it's not quite up to that two to 300 par that those SPS corals like a lot of times. So just something that I wanna keep in mind for the future. Now, because I have all of those data points written out on the pieces of paper, down the road when I get more corals, I have a good idea of where I can place them so that they are getting the optimal amount of light within the tank. Now something else, though I don't think I can do it on this tank, a lot of times the lights have the ability to be moved up and down closer to the tank or a little bit further away. So keep that in mind as well if you need to adjust the PAR in your tank. Now one other thing that you might keep in mind when it comes to considering the PAR in your tank, and it's a little bit hard to measure, is how the mesh lid on the top of the tank is going to affect the lighting levels. I can't imagine it's going to be too much of a change, but if you don't clean the mesh screen on top of your tank, if it gets dirty with salt creep or buildup or even dust, that could definitely affect the amount of light that's getting down through your tank. So make sure to keep up on your cleaning and keep those PAR values handy for the future. I'm curious to know, have you ever measured the PAR in your tank? If so, did it surprise you like it surprised me? Or was it spot on and right where it should be? Okay, that is going to conclude this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and maybe you will consider renting a PAR meter from saltwateraquarium.com. This has been Hillary for Waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.